Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Army of Darkness, released in 1992 as the third film in the Evil Dead trilogy. This movie picks up after the ending of the previous film, with Ash stuck in 1300 AD, although it does retcon the details of Evil Dead 2's ending, cutting out the hero chant led by Sam Raimi in his cameo. Hail he who has come from the skies to deliver us! From the of the Deadites. Produced by Universal, Army of Darkness faced a lot more studio involvement than either of the much more independent Evil Dead movies. Not only did Universal insist on a more upbeat ending than the more nihilistic original one that Sam Raimi shot, they also made a lot of cuts in general, and the theatrical version is more than 10 minutes shorter than Sam Raimi's director's cut. At the time I'm shooting this episode, I can't promise an immediate cut comparison for this movie, but you'll get one eventually, don't worry. Raimi and his usual crew, including producer Rob Tappert and of course Bruce Campbell, took Army of Darkness as an opportunity to get Ash out of the cabin entirely. In doing so, they also pretty much left the horror genre behind completely, since Army of Darkness, originally titled Medieval Dead until Universal nixed that idea too, is more of an adventure fantasy action flick. Oh, and a comedy. New co-writer Ivan Raimi, Sam's older brother, helped make Army of Darkness even more comedic than Evil Dead 2 was, and in my opinion, went just a tad too far with it, as a couple of scenes end up a little too goofy for my taste. Still, if Ashy Slashy's around, then you know there's gonna be some kills to count. Let's get to them. The movie begins with Ashley Williams in chains. He explains his unenviable position in a voiceover that, like I said in the intro, retcons the hero worship ending of Evil Dead 2. Ash explains how once upon a time, he had a nice cozy job at a big box store. Shop smart, shop S smart. But then he and his girlfriend Linda, played by a third actress, Bridget Fonda, wearing a third Michigan State shirt, went to a third cabin in the woods and found the third incarnation of the Necronomicon Ex Mortis. Same as the other two times, the book's passages awaken an evil first-person spirit, and it crashes through a cabin window to abduct Linda 3. Then, again as twice before, the spirit hits Ash in the face. Since the chainsaw hand was way too cool to retcon away, this movie recreates that scene to keep it canon, but it does so in a much less bloody way. Raimi actually shot this movie to get a PG-13 rating, and you can tell, it's barely got any blood at all. Of course, since the ratings board already hated him and this series by now, they still gave it an R, the bastards. The thankfully brief recap ends with the wormhole opening up and sucking down Ash and his car. Back to now, which is, uh, then, where there's an extra shot of Ash and his car falling out of the porthole before we're back to where we started when they hit the ground in clouds of dust. But this time through, there's no harpy deadeyed on a string for Ash to kill and make himself look good. So instead, the Knights of 1300 AD mistake him and his car as enemies of war. A wise man in attendance is the sole proprietor of the prophecy theory, but the commander here, Lord Arthur, doesn't buy it. He's one of Henry's men! <laughs> I say to the pit with him! And that's how Ash wound up being marched in shackles to Lord Arthur's castle, alongside some captured men from the enemy army of Duke Henry the Red. It's not a good place to be a prisoner of war. Even the kids here are dicks. <laughs> One fair castle maiden, Sheila, approaches Arthur and asks what happened to her brother, but when she learns that he was killed in battle, she spits in Ash's face and tears at his hair. Aw, oh, come on, lady, he's got enough trouble on his hands. Didn't you hear that he was slated for the pit? Pits are never good. Sometimes they have sarlaccs and shit. Lord Arthur and Henry the Red are currently waging war against each other, even though they're both apparently afflicted with a nasty case of deadites. And this evil has befouled my people as well! But at least Lord Arthur has made use of the evil scourge, since he keeps one down in that pit we've all been hearing so damn much about. First into the hole, though, is a random soldier of Henry's who is thrown in and lands deep down inside with a splash. After only a minute, the unseen soldier becomes a very bright red, very high spewing geyser of blood. This is about it for the blood you'll see in this movie, and even here, it's entirely comical, not scary at all. Seeing this, another one of Henry's dudes makes a run for it, but Lord Arthur calmly fires an arrow that flies through the air in a couple of fun shots and pins the deserting soldier to a random stake in the yard to die against. Not wanting either of those dude's fates, Ash tries to distance himself from Henry the Red. I, I never even saw these assholes before! But with one powerful rock toss from Sheila that hits Ash in the head, he's pushed into the pit and falls down into the shin-deep water below. Now, there may not be a Sarlacc down here, or even a Rancor for that matter, but there is an angry evil Deadite lady who starts pounding Ash in the face repeatedly as everyone above cheers her on. Ash begins to fight back with some Sonya Blade moves, but then Lord Arthur just orders some spike walls to close in on him. Things look pretty bad for Ash until the wild 
wise man shows up and tosses his chainsaw into the pit. Ash leaps up and befits his wrist with the power tool, and that, my friends, is how Ashy got his groovy back. With one solid swing, he decapitates the pit witch and leaves her pieces floating in the nasty shallow water. Before he can find a way out of the pit, another Deadeye comes out of the mossy walls and goes after him. He cuts its hand off, which hits some old dude up above in the mouth, and then uses his belt to hitch a ride out. But the nasty Deadeye, known as the Pit Bitch, I guess, doesn't want to let him go. This nasty snarling creature was designed and played by Billy Bryan, who, fun fact, also played the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in Ghostbusters. Ash is able to escape as the spike walls close and heaves himself out to trick Lord Arthur with a classic 20th century gag. Get all your shoelaces untied. Did they even have shoelaces back then? Ash threatens all the people around him, scaring them into submission, and demands that Henry the Red and his men are let go. Make sure you remember that favor when it comes time for the finale, Hank. After they ride out, Lord Arthur hilariously unsheathes his sword from a lowly sword boy and challenges Ash to a duel. But instead of accepting the offer, Ash chooses to Indiana Jones Lord Arthur and leave his long sword with a short blade. See this? This is my boomstick! He runs through all the details for the gun, though I've read that they're apparently incorrect, but at least the gun was manufactured in a cool place. That's right, this sweet baby was made in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hell yeah, Grand Rapids! You gave us Ash's boomstick and, uh, Gerald Ford. Could be worse. You also make sure to let the fine folk of 1300 AD know where they can pick one up for themselves. Shop smart. Shop s smart. You got that? For the grand finale of his gun show, he shoots at the pit deadite who had somehow made its way above ground. A second shot sends stunt performer Dick Hancock back flipping into the hole. And although we can't say with certainty that she's dead, I'll go ahead and add her to the count. Why not? Besides, Ash's little flare as he puts away his gun is enough to earn a kill all on its own. Now, let's talk about how I get back home. While they try to figure that out, Ash lives a life of luxury, which is probably pretty easy to do when you have a weapon from the future to threaten everyone with. Even Sheila, she of the dead brother, has changed her tune and now grovels at his side. First you want to kill me, now you want to kiss me. Blow. The wise man tells Ash that the Necronomicon, which they call a holy book, might have the spells that'll send him back to the present, but even a mere mention of the Book of the Dead is enough to set off a possessed witch who, what, was hanging out there undercover? She tells Ash that he'll never have the book and that they'll eat his soul, you know, the usual, and then thrillers into another Deadite fight with Ash. This fight was actually added in reshoots after Raimi realized his movie was lacking in the Deadite department, and the witch is played by stunt performer and actor Patricia Tallman, best known as Barbara in The Night of the Living Dead remake. She spins around like a top in a tornado until a backward shot over the shoulder hits her in the chest and apparently kills her? Again, I know gunshots aren't usually fatal for deadites, but different movie, different rules, I guess. Ash prepares for his venture to retrieve the Necronomicon with a suiting up montage that certainly must have inspired Edgar Wright's filmmaking, with so many comically dramatic push-ins that even Sheila gets one while she knits. At the end of it, he's got a killer strong metal hand that shocks Sheila and the blacksmith. Groovy. On the night before he leaves, Sheila comes to visit him. He's still mad at her, and she ends up slapping him, but you know how this story goes. Their tongues are about to get to know each other. Give me some sugar, baby. Dude, she got all the sugar in the world to give you. You're talking to Miss Honey right there. The next morning, Ash rides out with Arthur and his men, including the wise one, and they show him the path he needs to take to a cemetery that houses the Necronomicon. The wise man gives him very specific instructions. When he goes to get the book, he has to recite three words. Klaatu. Berata Nictu. The wise man tries to drill Ash on the words, but Ash was never one for study hour. I got it, I got it! I know your damn words, all right? He takes off from them, and as he's riding through the forest, an evil POV spirit starts chasing him and splitting trees in half. The chilling chase causes Ash to lose his horse by way of tree branch, and then he's chased out of the woods towards a windmill. Oh, we getting frankenstein -y up in this bitch? Night comes, and Ash gets so spooked by a mirror image of himself that he ends up running into it and breaking the mirror into pieces. Seems kinda random, but it does give way to one of this movie's more memorable sequences, as a bunch of tiny mirror ashes escape from their prison prison shards and spread out to torment their full-size carbon-based copy. Ramming speed! Yeah! And with that ramming speed butt stab, we kick off a real wacky sequence that is by far the most comedic thing we've seen in this franchise. I don't necessarily mean it's the funniest, because I don't think it is, but it's definitely the most outwardly comedic. I mean, the movie practically becomes a cartoon for a few minutes. My fair lady, ha! 
Still, it gives us another kill to add to the count when Big Ash throws that fork at a mini dude who was then stabbed through the chest and pinned to the wall. They eventually knock him out, and when he comes to, he finds himself in a scene right out of a Gulliver's Travel brochure. His Lilliputian adversaries use some very poor looking effects, jeez that just looks awful, to open his mouth and allow one of the mini Ashes to dive right in. At first you may think that that was some kind of suicide mission, but it turns out that Ash's innards are a great place to raise a kid, cause that mini Ash soon grows inside of normal Ash, who sprouts an eyeball out of his shoulder. That thing is pretty damn gross. Ash runs outside where he becomes a two-headed monster who howls at the moon. The two heads have a ridiculous fight with each other, complete with a lot of Three Stooges gags since Sam Raimi friggin' loves those. After they crab walk down a hill together, they're able to mitosis themselves into two separate beings. The new Ash introduces himself as Bad Ash and makes fun of our Ash's protagonism in a very Jim Carrey's Grinch kind of way. You're a goody little two-shoes. But our Ash responds by taking out his boomstick and shooting Bad Ash into silence. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. He chains Bad Ash to a workbench and uses his chainsaw to dismember him, but once again it's done in a mild manner, with a close-up on Bad Ash screaming his bad ass off. Ash throws his mirror nemesis into a grave and fills it up with dirt, but spoiler alert, this isn't the last time we see Evil Ash, so he won't go on the count just yet. Ash finally gets to the cemetery and finds the Book of the Dead. Wait, two Books of the Dead? Oh no way, a fucking third Book of the Dead? This is getting really out of hand. The first book has some kind of gravitational sinkhole that gives him stretch arms strong arms and a crimson chin chin. But don't worry, it's nothing a little cartoonish head shake can't fix. The second book bites his hand, must be hungry for knowledge or something, and that just leaves the third book. Seems fairly obvious. But hold up, Ash, you've got some words to say. You do remember them, don't you? Clatu! Barata! Mm. Now, you see that right there? That's the face of a man who realizes he's about to have to bullshit. And bullshit he does. Clatu! Barata! <laughs> if this movie's taught us one thing, it's that Ashley Williams is never the smartest man in the room. But I guess he thinks the evil dead spirits are just as dense as he is, since he considers the deed done and picks up the book. Of course, shit goes south in a heartbeat. Gravestones start taking off like bottle rockets, and on his way out, skeleton hands reach out and trip Ash before going into more zany comedic fight stuff. They can maybe dial it back a little bit, but at least Bruce Campbell commits. With any other actor, this shit would not fly. <laughs> He gets away and jumps onto his horse, wait when the horse come back, and rides off, not seeing that behind him, Evil Ash materializes above ground and is wearing a nasty new face. Evil Ash is also played by Bruce Campbell, and his makeup and design was done by Tony Gardner, the effects artist that Chucky killed that one time in Seed of Chucky. Dude, remember how fucking weird that movie was? Ash returns to the castle, where everyone is real happy to see him, even though he doesn't have time for all their praise. Oh, the fuck out of my face. He gives the book to the wise man, but admits that he flubbed the fancy words, so the wise man tells him that his mess up woke up the army of the dead. Ash responds that he doesn't care, he just wants to get back to his own time, and that selfishness disappoints everyone around him, especially Sheila, who thought she had something special with Ash. What of all the, the sweet words that you spoke in private? Uh, well, well, that's just what we call pillow talk, baby. That's all. Lucky for Ash, Mama Arthur raised a man of his word, so Lord Arthur agrees to help him still, even though it's gonna leave them pretty boned. Like, literally, it's an army of skeletons. Before we get to the skeletons, though, we've got a flying beast swooping down into the castle yard and kidnapping Sheila. It flies her away, and she's taken to evil Ash, who, uh, kinda sounds a bit like normal Ash. Give me some sugar, baby. And what does that say about you, normal Ash? Evil Ash essentially tells Sheila that this is her new home, and that sucks, man. She's probably gonna hate it more than she hates New York City, cause he's just digging up skeleton warriors and raising an army of the dead, so you know it's gonna smell weird, like when a dentist drills away some bone from your teeth. Oh, and also, Evil Ash forces Sheila to make out with him while his skeleton minions cheer. Not the most fun place to be. With Sheila kidnapped, Ash quickly does an about face and pledges to lead Lord Arthur's men against the army of the dead. And I guess Arthur's cool with that? Dude, you're getting army cucked. Ash leads a preparation montage where he teaches the primitives using information from a chemistry textbook found in the trunk of the classic. With it, they create gunpowder powder, which they're gonna need since Evil Ash has a secret weapon of his own. He's made Sheila a deadite too, oh no! I may be bad, but I feel good. 
end. It's go time, as Ash witnesses from atop a turret the impending army of the dead. I fucking love that they have a flautist, a drummer, and a couple of bony bagpipers. Good stuff. Evil Ash, who's downright rabid as he talks about nabbing the Necronomicon, sends his army towards the castle, where Ash's archers are waiting with dynamite strapped to their arrows. They fire away, and the explosions burst bones all over the place. Good thing I ain't counting skeletons on this list, cause that shit would be impossible. But the skeletons keep up their attack, and fire some arrows that kill two of Arthur's men atop the ramparts. One of them falls down to the bridge below, where more skeletons are crashing through the castle gates. This is gonna get real messy real fast, but you know me, I went frame by frame looking for kills. My efforts resulted in counting an initial batch of eight soldiers, who get killed by skeletons stabbing or slashing them with swords, or by various generic battle methods that left them lying dead in the background. To counteract this mayhem, Ash busts out the classic, which has been converted into a deathmobile, and as he drives it around, fucking up skeletons like they xenomorphs and this is aliens, I see another background guy dying, but oddly enough, not to any foe in sight. Are you telling me we gotta fight in business skellies now? Sheila steps out and shows herself in regular M. Beth David's form, and during that shot, I see three more dudes in the background getting killed. Starting to get some purge flashbacks here, and I do not like it. Anyway, Sheila's heavenly beauty causes Ash to crash that classic and destroy the car in an explosion. Three more soldiers get killed by an arrow shot, a sword stab, and Evil Ash's crossbow to the face as he and his lieutenant, played by Bill Friggin' Mosley in an eye patch, enter the castle. Meanwhile, Evil Sheila attacks Ash and tries to spearhead an end to his lineage before he's able to knock her into the pit. During that fight, I counted six more kills, including the dude crawling away with a sword in his back and another dude getting stabbed in the face. The best one, though, is definitely the guy in the background getting repeatedly stabbed by a skeleton. That's a lot of fun. We get another random soldier's dead body atop a castle turret when his living comrade sees that Duke Henry the Red has shown up with his men to help rescue the castle. And although the new reinforcements are able to handily dispense of the evil minions, Evil Ash pulls a Stannis and climbs up a ladder to kill one poor soldier himself. Then after Good Ash climbs up after him, we see another random dead dude in the background draped over the parapet. And finally, while Ash fights minions, a human soldier runs by the foreground with a sword through his back. And I just don't think he's gonna make it, so let's count it. Evil Ash heads over to the Necronomicon, pausing long enough only to kill another soldier by punching him in the face and breaking his neck against the castle wall. When he reaches the unholy Book of the Dead, he's stopped from grabbing it by Ash, who throws a spear through his back and sets off their final climactic battle. Time for another fight full of Ash, 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 Ash. It's Ash versus Ash in a kick-ash battle, where Evil Ash is played by stunt coordinator Chris Boyle. During their fight, I see another dead body hanging out back there, so toss it on the list. Good Ash manages to light Evil Ash on fire and kick him down from the castle wall, but the dude climbs back up with all his skin burnt off, giving us another new form of Evil Ash. And move over, that Ash too fast, with his sword, as one poor soldier learns when he gets stabbed and killed by the big bad villain on top of the castle wall. Good Ash is knocked to the ground below, and after Evil Ash grabs the Book of the Dead, he front flips down to taunt our hero with a voice by director Sam Raimi. I possess the Necronomicon! I've crushed your pathetic army! Now I'll have my vengeance! But Good Ash doesn't care that this evil Ash made Darkman, so he knocks the Necronomicon from the Skelly Ash's hands and cuts the restraining rope to the catapult Evil Ash is standing on. Ah! Oh, and also, there was some gunpowder on there, so, uh, boom. Evil Ash is dead. Yay! I, uh, I didn't really care for Evil Ash. The skeleton soldiers all run away in defeat, one of them memorably voiced by Ted Raimi. Let's get the hell out of here! Ah! Sheila is reverted back to her normal maiden form, so she and Ash can embrace. Peace is also made between Arthur and Henry the Red, so cool, a happy ending for everyone. Fist pumps all around. The wise man uses the Necronomicon to fix up a little potion for Ash, and he tells him that he's gotta recite the words precisely this time if he wants to get back home to the present. Ash and Sheila share one last kiss goodbye, and then he's off. And the movie fades into a blue light special at S-Mart, where it's revealed that Ash is telling his story to a very skeptical co-worker, who is also played by Ted Raimi. But Ash once again admits that he might have flubbed the words a little bit. So later on, after he's talking to the chick that left Adam Sandler in The Wedding Singer, an evil wind whips through and reveals a goddamn deadite in the store. This reshot ending was filmed well after the rest of the movie had wrapped, and it kind of feels like Bruce Campbell's not as into it, even though he gets some memorable lines. Lady, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to leave the store. Who the hell are you? Name's Ash. Housewares. Still, it gives us a chance for an old Evil Dead standard. 
I'll swallow your soul! Come get some. And one last kill to add on the count, even if it's just from a whole bunch of shotgun blasts. Can shotguns even fire that many times in a row? I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. Ash muses that it's good he came back to the present, rather than stay in the past and be king, because you know what? He's kind of a king already. The movie ends with one of Ash's best known one-liners. Hail to the king, baby. And a kiss. Aww. How many bodies did we wind up with after all those scary skeleton kills? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Oh, I'm gonna go do the numbers. Okay, uh, I'll just wait here, I guess. I counted 38 kills in Army of Darkness, because like, war, man. The victims consisted of 32 human dudes, one mini mirror ash, one full-sized evil ash, and four female deadites. No human ladies, and skeletons don't count. Grow some skin, ya fucks. With a runtime of 81 minutes, we had a kill on average every 2.13 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to that first dude who went into the pit. I understand you wanted that PG-13 rating, Sam, but I need more blood in my Evil Dead movies. And at least this first step gave me some, even if it was pretty jokey. Doll machete for lamest kill will go to the S-Mart deadite. For an ultimate enemy of the trilogy, she went down in an awfully lame way, just getting shot a bunch of times. Back in my day, Deadites could survive a damn decapitation. And that's it. Army of Darkness came out in 1992 and did kind of meh at the box office, at least partially thanks to people not knowing it was another Evil Dead movie. The series wouldn't return to the big screen until the kind of remake 20 years later, and we'll look at that film next week. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this week's Kill Count. I want to thank a couple of patrons like C. Maxwell, Karenina Hall, and Jared Ralph. Like I mentioned, you'll get a cut comparison for Army of Darkness one day, but I'm not sure exactly when. I'm actually filming this way early in advance because of my little surgery going on. If you didn't hear, don't worry, it's just a little thing to help me breathe easier, but that's why I'm not putting out as much stuff during November. Well, that and I'm fucking tired. Be good people.